Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 86th episode of Money Morphin Power Rangers, as well as the 26th episode of Season 2 titled Zed Waves. We begin this episode at a beach where Stone Canyon is holding a triathlon, as we're told by some reporter extra. The Stone Canyon trio are all participating while Tommy, Billy, and Kim are there to cheer them on. According to Kim, they're also gearing up to pick teenagers to attend the peace conference in Switzerland from Angel Grove. Gee, I wonder who they'll pick. Tommy wonders if they pick Billy, what's gonna happen to the Power Rangers? We did this already. The competition starts. Zed is watching it from the moon, planning to attack while they're watching the competition. I don't know. Bulk and Skull are in the lake where the athletes are, and they're in a boat waiting to read the energies of people competing because the Power Rangers will put out even more energy. I mean, I guess that's not a bad idea. Then everything they have gets zapped away except for the boat falling into the water. Zed talks to Goldar about his mind control Zed waves that he's going to enslave people with now, so he creates a monster from the items that Vulcan Skull had, Beancaster. He immediately targets people in a nearby park, placing them under mind control as they all chant, Hail Lord Zed. The alarms in the command center go off and Alpha contacts the rangers. Aisha, Rocky, and Adam get out of the water and with the help of the others get ready to start biking when Tommy's communicator goes off, but Tommy can't hear it. Then Jason, Zack, and Trini come out of the ocean in scuba gear because apparently that's what they were doing. Whatever, they morph and they are immediately put under Beancaster's spell as well. These guys are really useless now, huh? Zed tells Goldar to dispatch the putties and they appear in front of the ranger teens and the Stone Canyon trio who abandon their bikes. All six fight off the putties and this is one of the only times I've ever really realized that Karen Ashley, who plays Aisha, has no real fighting training. Maybe she'll get better like Trini did. They win when Zordon beeps Tommy. The rangers teleport out while the others decide to finish their race. At the command center, Billy, Kim, and Tommy teleport in, observing the viewing globe to get caught up on Beancaster and the people under the spells, including Jason, Zack, and Trini. Billy says he'll try to use a device to reverse the Zed waves. Meanwhile, everyone is biking! Weird juxtaposition, huh? Bulk and Skull are walking around and they run into Beancaster before they're promptly also put under the spell, but instead of Hail Lord Zed, Skull keeps saying Hail Lord Fred. We then watch people clap for like 5 minutes before Beancaster shows up enslaving the whole crowd. Jesus, like we get it guys. At the command center, Billy has everything ready but it's untested. Tommy says that they have to hurry, so they just go along with it untested, morphing to the scene. Beancaster fires at them and they roll away which causes the people to trample Billy's device. Tommy runs away like a punk while Beancaster puts pink and blue under his spell. Then Beancaster fires an apple bomb at him, causing a slow motion explosion. Then a frog bomb. Then a bamboo shoot bomb. Then he just puts Tommy under the spell too. Take that, Power Rangers. Beancaster disappears. The Stone Canyon trio roll up on their bikes, seeing how everyone is hypnotized, confused as to what the hell is going on. They find Billy's device before they start being targeted by the crowd. Alpha teleports them out of there right away to the command center, and Jason tells them what happened. Thankfully, Aisha worked at a radio station, so she knows something about radio frequencies somehow. Why is Aisha the one doing this? They aim the device at the viewing globe, and a beam goes from it to the rangers through the screen somehow. Then, Zordon adds his brain power? What in God's name is happening? The rangers are rescued and they teleport to the command center. This place gets crowded with nine people in it. They take Billy's device, leaving, and Billy fires the device at Beancaster, who hits it back. He then tosses a ginger bomb at them, but Tommy catches a potato bomb, and he tosses it back, hitting Beancaster. The same thing happens with another bomb before the five core rangers form the power blaster, firing at Beancaster, killing him. Then Kim gets so excited she has a mini seizure. <laughs> The spell wears off of the citizens, and Bulk and Skull are confused as to what happened. I mean, same. The triathlon is completing, and here comes the crowd. Oh, and Aisha, and Adam, and Rocky come in last. And the three rangers are there cheering them on, feeling bad about them having to lose just because they had to help the rangers. But it's high fives all around. The end. This episode honestly feels like they could have just written Jason, Zack, and Trini out by now. No need to keep insisting that they're there when they're not. Just say that they got selected for the peace conference a while ago, left, now their zords are on autopilot or something. Then they meet Rocky, Aisha, and Adam, and they decide to give the power coins to them. Maybe have the three rangers on the lookout for new candidates for red, black, and yellow. 
Overall, this episode wasn't bad at all, which is surprising at this point in season two. It's actually pretty decent, and I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. Will next time keep that up? Find out then, but until then, may the power protect you.